medical report on William Rose. You make it sound as though he had leprosy. From the age of six, this is from the family doctor, to 11, the boy showed signs of excessive, violent, and uncontrollable temper. I recommended psychiatric treatment. I understand he responded well. Look, David, you're prejudging this boy. Maybe I am, but his type burns me up. You think he's guilty? Well, don't you? No, I'm not happy about this one. Look, motive, jealousy. His knife with his initials, his fingerprints, his footprints, his shoes. It all fits. Yes, it fits all right. It fits too well. Look, David, recheck every statement taken by division. See every witness again personally. I want to make sure that none of us are influenced one way or the other. All right. Remember? No. It will cost you a quid. A bit old for this, aren't you? You got to be a member, though. Here's a card. Fill it out. Here's a card. Read it. Now, look, mister. I run this club strictly straight. No pills, no dope, no reefers, no booze. No nothing, huh? I've got the picture. table's taken, mate, so I'm going to bleed to death. I'd like to talk to you, please. Me? Yes, you are Peggy Walsh, aren't you? Yes. I don't know if she should. I'd like to talk to you alone, if you don't mind. See you later, Peggy. Won't you sit down? I'm a police officer. Is that Winifred? Yes. You knew her well, didn't you? She was my best friend. Did she talk to you much about Bill Rose? All the time. Tell me what she said about him, just in your own words. Well, Winnie was cheesed off because Bill kept threatening her. To knife her, I mean. God knows I tried to warn her. Did you get a good look at the knife? Yes. Why? Did it have his initials on it? Yes, that's the one. How long ago did it start, this, this knife-threatening business? Oh, weeks ago. He's been doing it for ages. You're sure it wasn't days ago? No, weeks. Well, he only got the knife for his birthday. A week ago, last Saturday. You calling me a liar? Well, you said it, Miss Walsh. Not me. Who is that, Copper? Yes. Hey, excuse me, sir. On remember. Thank you. Hey, Rod. What? Do you think Rose done it? You ask me, I don't think he has the guts. <laughs> well, well, well. If it isn't Mr. Sherlock Holmes himself. Are you uh, the Mr. Rod Jenkins? Please don't arrest me, mister. I've got my dear old grandmother to support. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jenkins, you made a statement to Division the other day. Yeah, the police are always asking me for their help. They say, uh, Rod, we need your help. We're in trouble. Are you always <laughs> so funny, Sonny? Yeah, and I write my own gags. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so they taught you to write at reform school, did they? I'm impressed. You like me to spit on your badge, copper? You're slipping, Mr. Jenkins. That's not very funny. Go on, Rod, show him. Yeah, go on, Rod. Show me. What do you want? In your statement, you said you saw Bill Rose on Sunday night in the park looking for Winnie. Yeah, that's right. How'd you know he was looking for Winnie? Rose was always looking for Winnie. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you know he was looking for Winnie on Sunday night? Well, uh... Did he say so? 
No, but, uh... Did you see him meet her? Well, no, not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? Did you see him meet Winnie, or didn't you? Well, everyone knows they're in those bushes together. Oops. You know. No, I don't know. Did you see Winnie? Well, she was waiting for him. Did you see her? Well, no. Well, why do you say you did? Well, you know how it is. I mean, they were together all afternoon. And I assume that... Uh... Oh, so you assume. Look, Copper, if you don't like the way I answer your questions, why don't you run me in? You're not worth it, Junior. Oh, by the way, clean your teeth at home, Sonny. When you went into the park to look for Winifred, you saw Bill Rose. Yes, sir. Running away, he was. Why didn't you mention that in your statement? I did, I think. No, you didn't. Well, I was, you know, uh, upset, grief-stricken. A lot you care. No, no, dear. She's my daughter, not yours. You've never cared tattens for her. He resented her, that's what. You're upset, dear. You don't mean that. Uh, what was Rose wearing when you saw him? Oh, T-shirt, uh, corduroy jacket, blue trousers, red socks. You could see all that at night. Now, we knew what he was wearing. He called to pick Winnie up Sunday lunchtime. So you knew what he was wearing? Well, what difference does that make? I recognised him. You saw Rose running away from some bushes. Did you go and look in the bushes? Oh, why would I do that? You were searching for Winifred. Not in the bushes. Why didn't you stop Rose and ask him if he'd seen Winifred? He was running. Well, why didn't you call to him? <sighs> What's the point in all this? We all know that little swan stabbed my daughter. Why don't you hang him and I've done with it? Because that's what everybody seems to want. I'm just not satisfied. All right, I'll see myself out. Did you talk to the Walsh girl? Any previous arrest? Yes, Peggy Walsh is an unreliable witness. You mean she's a liar? She said Rose had been threatening Winifred with his knife for weeks. Well, Mary only bought the knife a week ago Saturday. How'd you get on with Norton? He's unreliable, too. That makes three of them. Rod Jenkins' statement just doesn't hold water. He contradicted himself all over the place. Uh -huh. So it's not quite as open and shut as we thought, is it? David, you still think Rose is guilty? Well, from a forensic point of view. Yeah. But when you get one of your hunches, well, I just don't know. Well, the trouble in this business, David, is you have to know. You've got to be absolutely sure. Sit down, Miss. Nice of you to come. I wanted to. How are you? Oh, well, if you like porridge, quite a nice rescuer. How have they been treating you? Oh, fine, fine. For a lifer. Bill, don't. I've learned some new words. Bird means sentence. Snout, that's tobacco. A cell's called a peter. One of these is a screw. Please, Bill. A bent screw is one who takes bribes from the inmates. Bill, there's so much I want to say, and there's not much time. Well, go on, then. Well, I've been thinking about the knife. There were dozens just like that in that shop. Anyone could have had a knife like that. With my fingerprints and my initials on it? Well, you lost it, and someone else found it. Oh, Mary, it's hopeless. They just don't like my face. Putting it on me was easy, and it satisfies everybody. The bulb's gone. Mary. What? I remember. Remember what? The last time I had my knife. I was over at Winnie's. My mother was doing some ironing in the kitchen. There was a short in the iron, and it blew a fuse. I had to use the knife to get the fuse out. And that was the last time you had it? Yeah, yeah, I'm positive, because that was the day I... bought my trousers and the new shoes. I called for Winnie, and she wanted me to wear them to take her out. So I changed in her room. Mary, I remember. Go on, Bill, go on. Oh, that's it. I, I left my old trousers and the old shoes in Winnie's room. I asked her to get rid of them. And that's the last time I saw the knife and the old shoes. Bye, Bill.
You must speak to Commander Gideon. It's very urgent. Yes, it's Mary Rose speaking. Oh, thank you. Uh, Gideon. Yes, Mary. I'm at the Lawton's house. I think I found something. You see, I saw Ben in prison today, and he said... <laughs> Tell your Bill's sister. Yes. Did he tell you to come in? Yes. Are those? No, no. Spy, weren't you? No, I wasn't. Sneaking here to spy, that's what you're doing. No, I wasn't. Let me go. To the police? No. It's just the same with Winnie. Always spying, sticking her nose in. Winnie wants this, Winnie wants that, Winnie first, years and years of it. She was a stuck-up, spoiled, rotten little slut. So I put on Bill's shoes, took his knife, and went to look for her in the park. And when I found her, I let her have it. Fred! Fred! <laughs> I turn around. Thank <laughs> you. 
They're making for the railroad. Try and hit them off. Good yard. Come on, let's go. Every government has its secret service branch. America, its CIA, France, Deuxième Bureau, England, MI5. NATO also has its own. A messy job? Well, that's when they usually call on me, or someone like me. Oh, yes. My name is Drake. John Drake. In Malvania, the name of Josper is as common as Smith back home. But when a Mr. Josper lay close to death in a hospital in the little country town of Marine, I got to it from Washington in under 24 hours. Well, good morning. I'm Dr. John Drake. I believe that I'm expected here today. Thank goodness you arrived, Dr. Drake. I am the hospital director. Oh, how do you do? No, you wouldn't believe it. Dr. Stanislaw himself has arrived from the capital and just taken over. I understand that a patient has contracted an unidentified disease. So I gather. But no one tells me anything definite. No one is allowed to enter or leave the private wing. Has the disease been diagnosed yet? They don't seem to know what it is. I fear it may be typhus. That could account for the unusual precautions. Oh, really? Uh, yes. Come this way. Thank you. Just a minute. If you please. I am taking Dr. John Drake, a specialist in infectious diseases. We know all about Dr. Drake. He can pass no one else. This is outrageous. In my own hospital. Don't forget, don't let anyone pass without my permission. This way, Dr. Drake. Oh, thank you very much. I am Major Minos in charge of security. I'm glad you could come, Mr. Drake. He's in here. So, that is Mr. Josper. 
I seem to recognize him under another name. Yes, President Ronald. He has the assassin's bullet still in his brain. Can they save him? They must. You see the man by the bed over there? That is Dr. Keller, the famous brain surgeon. He arrived from California this morning. And the other? Our own man. A brain surgeon from the capital. And now my security arrangements. I have put an army of guards around the central hospital in the capital, a hundred miles away. Outside are a crowd of thousands weeping and praying. There is a bandaged figure lying there in a private ward. Already there have been two attempts on his life, while our president lies here undisturbed. Well, you've done very well, Major Minas. I can't imagine why they sent from me. But naturally, NATO is very concerned. If President Varnell dies, the democracies would lose a great friend. We are grateful for any help you can give us, Mr. Drake. Our president must live, but he has very determined enemies. We must keep his presence here a complete secret. It is essential that we attract no attention to this hospital whatsoever. Dr. Keller, Dr. Stanisford, this is Mr. Drake of NATO. How are you doing? How are you? Ah, yes, security NATO. Very glad you could come, Mr. Drake. Uh, the life of your president is very important to us all, Dr. Stanisford. What are his chances? Well, there's a hemorrhage. He's lost a lot of blood. and We won't be able to operate yet, not until he's regained some strength. Tonight, perhaps. Well, Major, with you to guard his security and Dr. Keller his life, he's got every chance of pulling through. Nothing more I can do at the moment. I'll go and check into my hotel. If you are not comfortable, let me know. I told them to give you their best room. <laughs> nice of you. See you later on. Well, may I have my hat and coat, please? Yes, Thank you very much. Oh, Dr. Drake, a special oh. messenger has just arrived from your embassy. Oh, oh thank you. Well, I'm John Drake. You uh, have a message for me? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Chap, thanks very much. Top priority, John Drake. Investigate report from Zanarda. American girl found wandering, suffering from loss of memory. When questioned, will only repeat Marine Hospital Sunday. This suggests most serious breach of security. How did she get this information? Who is she? As she associates, is she connected with another attempt on the president's life? Please investigate immediately. Oh, pardon me. How far is it to Zanarda? Some 30 miles. Uh, where can I hire a car here? What? Drive to Zanarda? Oh, no, Dr. Drake, not across those roads. You must take a train to Klosditch and then find whatever transport you can. Klosditch, all right. Oh, will you tell Major Minas I'll be back later on today? Of course. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. We are very grateful. And what is more, I'm not going to have her any longer. You must take her away. Oh, yes, of course. You're a, a good Samaritan. Any idea where she came from? My husband brought her in a truck. He says he doesn't know who she is. Oh, may I see her? She's in bed. My bed. Yes. You are from the American Embassy? Yes, that's right. Good. I said to Kupnik, our local policeman, it is well for our own people to look after her. How is she? She's suffering from shock, from great mental strain. I've given her a sedative. Any idea who she is yet? No, she's suffering from amnesia. She remembers nothing. Poor child. Poor child. <laughs> she pretends. Now, a little charity. It is genuine shock. She also has superficial injuries and bruises. Has she been talking at all? And she keeps saying over and over again, even in her sleep, Mirene Hospital Sunday. Well, that's today. It makes no sense. No. And you've no idea at all where she came from? None. The farmer found her. Uh, so he says. May I see him? He's out. I told him not to come back to the house while she was here. Uh, did he say where he'd found her? He said five miles away, on the plains, in pajamas. Now, let the poor child sleep. Oh, yes, of course. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to take me to the place where your husband found her. <laughs> Only my husband knows that. But I'll take you to where he said he found her. Thank you. I'm obliged. <laughs> According to his story, it must have been somewhere here. It's really the middle of nowhere, isn't it? Well, I'll take my word for it. You're wasting your time. You don't know my husband. Or does she look the sort of girl you'd find in the middle of a plane? I never found a girl in the middle of a plane. There was a girl in a theater in Lutz last year. They say she danced in pajamas. She wasn't American. I 
yes, no. Coincidence. Mm. If we are to believe everything we are told, no, just she just... Where does that line go? Marine. And the transcontinental train goes through that way? Yes. Well, she, uh, must have fallen off the train. But my husband never travels by train. No. Would you mind turning around and going back, please? How is she now? She's awake. She's very frightened. Do not ask too many questions. Do you mind if I talk to you for a little? My name is uh, John Drake. I come from the same part of the world as you do. Cigarette? I've uh, just arrived from Washington. I've, uh, I've just arrived from Washington. They, they tell me that you can't remember very much. Well, that, it sometimes happens. Funny thing, if you came from Washington, too. Well, that would be too much of a coincidence. You are an American, aren't you? Marine Hospital. What's that? Marine Hospital. Marine Hospital. Oh, yes. Yes, we know all about that. Marine Hospital, Sunday. Now, look. I want to help you. That's why I'm here. I think I know what happened to you. You were on a train, weren't you? Poor child. She remembers nothing. Now, try to remember. Something happened to you on that train. You were on a train, Mr. weren't you? Mr. Drake, please. Yes, I was on a train. I went to sleep. That's right. Now you're remembering. You went to sleep. Something happened to you. What was it? On the train to Mary? On the train to Mary? On the train to Mary? No! 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 She must have her propension. And the sooner the better. She's not welcome here. Yes, I'm sorry. You're quite right. They, uh, they sent some things from the, uh, embassy. Are all these for her? That's right. I, I wonder would you...